Everybody, this is the accounting professor and welcome to the statement of cash flows part four. This is my advanced example one. We'll have a few more of these and should be fun. So my disclaimer and copyright notice, the information and opinions in this presentation are those of myself and not my employers or affiliated organizations, including but not limited to Irvine Valley College and the South Orange County Community College District. The presentation is for educational purposes only and does not constitute any legal or accounting advice whatsoever. This presentation is copyright 2008 to 2023 by Bennett Tchaikovsky. All rights are reserved. Any distribution is strictly prohibited. So we're now going to talk about a more advanced example. So this is the part four of the video series. The first one is an overview, which is part one. Part two is a very basic example. Part actually part two is part two is a simple. Part three is a basic example. But if you're jumping to this video first without having watched the previous videos, you may be in trouble. So watch those other ones first. You can watch me on times two speed. That's what many people tell me, or you can slow me down or speed me up or whatever you want to do. <clears throat> so how are we going to go through and learn cash flows? Again, we're going to set up the skeleton. We're going to create the T accounts, deal with the additional information, reconcile the T accounts, all the, all the T accounts balanced, check to see if the large T accounts balance, and then prepare the statement of cash flows. Remember that when we're talking about the section, what goes where, right? So when we have a statement of cash flows, operating, investing, financing, easy way to do it. I'm buying or selling my own stock. I'm issuing debt, repurchasing or paying off debt, investments. I'm making capital expenditures. I'm doing investing activities, buying a business, selling a business, operating, pretty much everything else. And lastly, we have something called non-cash activities, which we're going to go through and look at in, in this particular question. So one of the things we are going to be looking at, too, is that this particular question we're going to be doing right now uh, basically involves a situation where we have a net loss. So we're going to be taking a look at that one in particular. And let's go through and take a look at our example. Just give me a moment. So you have Saba Leanne Inc. balance sheet. I think these are both my students at Chapman University many years back. But let's go through and take a look at this company. So we're going to have SLI. First thing we do is we are preparing a cash flow skeleton, right? What happened to cash? Well, cash went up by $2 million. So that's what we're going to be going through and showing. Statement of cash flows for the year ended 12, 31, 21. This is what we have to go through and prepare. And I would have to say down here, prepare a required, prepare a statement of cash flows for SLI for the year ended 12, 31, 21. That's what we're going through and doing. So we're going to have over here cash flows from operating activities. To net cash blank operating activities, cash flows from investing activities, net cash blank investing activities, cash flows from financing activities, net cash blank financing activities, total change in cash. So my cash went up by 2 million. My beginning cash balance was 500. So my ending cash balance is going to be 2.5 million. And what I also want to do is I want to say non cash transactions, because we're going to have some of those in this particular question, right? So that hasn't changed. Let's set up the main accounts. So we've done that part. So I'm going to go ahead and hide this until later on. Okay, so we're going to hide this. And now what we're going to do is we're going to have our big cash T account. We have operating. We have investing. And we have financing, right? So we've got these three different sections of our cash T account, right? Very important on how we set this up. 
So let's go through and put in our beginning and ending balances. Remember, I'm using T accounts, right? Assets typically have debit balances, increase with debits, decrease with credits, liabilities and equity typically have credit balances, increase with credits, decrease with debits. We record expenses with debits, revenues with credits, and let's do it. So we've got over here accounts receivables, an asset. Beginning balance here was 400. Ending balance is 300. The allowance for doubtful accounts. You see a negative amount on the asset side. It means it's going to be a contra asset account. Opening balance, credit of 15. Ending balance, credit of 35. We've got inventory. Beginning is 200. Ending is 350. We have prepaid expenses. Beginning is 175. Ending is 150. We have short-term investments. Beginning is 100. Ending is 150. So current assets, we're going to leave that alone. We've got land. Opening is 100. Ending is 200. We have equipment. Opening is 600. Ending is 750. We have accumulated depreciation on equipment. Contra asset account, right? It's got a negative balance in the asset section. Credit opening of 200 ending of 250 intellectual property right over here opening 100 ending of 500 what does that mean does it mean it's smart no it's a patent copyright trademark or something along those lines okay accumulated amortization intellectual property right so the kiso question i did the other day uh, they didn't do this. I like to use the accumulated amortization. It's like depreciation, but for intangible assets. So we've got our total assets. Now let's go on to our liabilities. We've got accounts payable as a credit balance, opening 250, ending 500. Accrued liabilities, opening of 300, ending of 100. Unearned revenue, opening of 185 ending of 215. All credits. Why is it a credit? It's a liability. It's going to have a credit balance. Over here, bond payable, opening of zero, ending of 1500. Premium on bonds payable, okay, opening of zero, ending of 50. If it was a discount, and I think I have a question like that, that we're going to go through. La, 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 la. Yeah, discount, we'll do that one next. But premiums have a credit balance, okay? So then we have over here, uh, non-current. So now we're going to get to common stock at par. Credit one, ending credit of one, additional paid in capital common stock, opening of 199, ending of 1999000 Now here's a fun one, treasury stock. When we have treasury stock, and I love the fact that I have the Home Depot open. When you look at this, this is treasury stock, meaning shares we have gone through and have repurchased. Home Depot has repurchased $93 billion of their shares on the open market, right? It's going to show as a negative balance on owner's equity, meaning it is going to have a debit balance. So over here, opening is zero. Ending debit balance is 100, right? So again, it's a negative in the equity section. Owner's equity typically has credit balance. So you're going to show that as a debit, okay? Retained earnings, right? Opening balance over here of a million 15, ending balance of 320. So we have gone through, let's do our checklist. We set up the skeleton. We've created T accounts for uh, all of our balance sheet accounts. And now we're going to go through and deal with the additional information first. Again, when you're setting up the T accounts, as you saw in the last question, I messed myself up by putting in total owner's equity. You can rebound, right? But you need to make sure you go through and you're taking the time to go through and to do this. So let's go ahead and look at our additional information first. We had a net loss of 695 for the year ended 1231-21. Where does that go? Well, in our statement of retained earnings, right? If we have a net income, it would go on the right-hand side. 
If it's a loss, meaning we lost money, it's going to go on the left. So over here, we've got retain earnings. We're going to go ahead and debit that for $6.95. I'm going to do the opposite to cash. So in the operating section, right over here, I'm going to show this as a, as a credit to cash for $6.95. I'm going to call it what it is. This over here is a net loss, okay? I lost money. It's gonna show as a negative on the statement of cash flows, right? I did some examples of that earlier when I was showing you Twitter or X prior to Musk acquisition, right? So right over here, that's where we're gonna go through and do with a net loss, okay? We don't have any dividends in this case. Normally we might have some net income, but in this case we had a net loss, so this would show as a credit in the operating section to cash. Okay, now we had equipment that we went through and sold. This is one of the special exceptions when we have a situation when we're selling equipment. When we sell equipment, we have to go through and prepare this journal entry, right? Why is that so important? Because if we don't prepare this journal entry, and post it, it's not going to go well. Okay. Now, very important about where things go. Let's go through and do this one. Okay. So right over here, on March 15th, 2021, equipment costing 100 that had accumulated depreciation of 20 was sold for 10,000 cash. Let's write this out as a journal entry. When I sell equipment, right, I have over here loss balancing. I'm gonna have cash that I received. I have to take the accumulated depreciation off of the books with a debit. I also have to remove the equipment from my books. So with the equipment, typically has a debit balance, go through and show that as a credit. And then over here, gain balancing. Okay, now, when I go through and input this, if we think about it intuitively, if the equipment costs me 20, and basically the equipment costs me 100, accumulated depreciation of 20, this is on my books for 80, right? So over here, I'm getting cash of 10. I have a loss on sale of equipment of 70. Okay, how did I get that? Well, to balance this journal entry, right, over here, prior to the loss, I have 30 of debits, 100 of credits. To make this balance, I'm going to need 70, right? You want to do this as a journal entry, extremely important, right? Make sure you go through and do this, right? So what I'm going to now go through and do is I'm going to take this journal entry and put it into the T accounts. And I'll go ahead and give these all a nice color. So Kara gave me permission to use this. So this is perfect. Okay. So right over here. So equipment. I credited equipment over here for 100. Right. So I come over here to equipment for 100. It's being credited. I'm debiting accumulated depreciation on equipment for 20. Okay, now the fun part. The cash proceeds, the sale of equipment. This is going to show in here in the investing section at 10. Right, so the cash proceeds from the sale of equipment is going to show over here if I'm selling equipment this is going to show in the investing section very important now the loss is going to go into the operating section directly as a debit I don't if you're just getting new to this and I can give you an explanation for this I don't want it to overwhelm you the best way to deal with this type of question if we had a gain, it would be a credit. I'm directly taking this journal entry and I'm posting it to the T accounts. 
But the reason why is, is because I'm adding back the loss on sale of equipment because this is already kind of over here. The loss is already embedded into this amount. The loss was shown over here. So I have to go through and add this back. You do not need to know that to do a cash flow statement. Just understand that the loss is going to go through and be added back in the operating section. Cash proceeds go in investing. Loss or gain on the sale of equipment is going to go into the operating section, right? So we're going to basically, this is going to go... Okay, so over here, again, very, very important, right, for this particular question. You're going to see a bunch of these on your exam if you're taking my class. Good times at Morongo. Okay, so we've dealt with the addition, this first one over here. Dealt with the net loss, and we've dealt with the sale of equipment. Here, I sold shares of common stock for 1800 cash. When I sell stock, right? I'm debiting cash because I'm getting money. And I would typically credit common stock at par, additional paid in capital, common stock, right? We learned this from when we're going through and reviewing owner's equity. If you look at this question, though, I didn't put anything over here into common stock at par. It all went into additional paid in capital, common stock. When I sell stock, I'm going to basically go through over here and do the opposite to cash. So I'm going to go ahead and debit cash. It's going to be in the financing section. I do not call this an increase in additional paid in capital common stock. I'm going to call this a sale of common stock. If you give me the wrong description, you will lose points. Call it what it is. Follow the additional information. That's what you want to go through and do. Over here. On January 30th, 2021, we acquired a patent valued at 400 by issuing a bond payable for 400. Notice what's happening here. Let's think about the journal entry. I got a patent worth 400. Did I pay cash for that? No, I issued a bond payable. Or 400. This is something we call a non cash transaction. Okay, so for non cash transactions, what do we go through and do? We're going to create a journal entry, input this into the T accounts. Very important to do. And then lastly, we're going to disclose at the bottom of the statement of cash flows, the transaction. So let's go through and do this for this non-cash transaction. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to go to patent right, or intellectual property, same thing. I'm going to debit this over here for 400. I'm going to credit bonds payable for 400. Note, though, this is not a purchase of intellectual property. This is not the issuance of a bond, right? Why not? because this is a non-cash transaction. So what I'm going to do over here is below here is I'm gonna say acquired a 400 patent, a patent by issuing a 400 bond payable. So that's what I'm gonna go through and say, as long as you're saying something that matches down here, you generally should be okay. If we're doing this in real life, we're gonna go plagiarize uh, allowed uh, allowable plagiarism from uh, another company at the SEC. So I'll get that uh, language correct. 
So that's what we're going to go through and do. So you don't touch cash because it's non-cash. However, we have to go through and disclose it. So we're going to go through and disclose it by putting it down over here. So let's now go over here to our next, uh, next item over here, which is number five. And this is why, again, this particular exam is such a great review for everything. I issued bonds with a stated rate of 5%, doesn't matter, and a face value of 1.1 million that raised 1,150,000 in total proceeds. Whenever I'm dealing with a bond, right, I'm always going to show the bond at its face value, right? So I'm going to show always show this over here at the face value. I'm going to debit cash for my proceeds. Don't need to use a present value table or whatever else. However, what I need to go through and do, though, is that this does not balance. If my proceeds are higher than the face amount of the bond payable, this is going to give me a premium on bonds payable. And this basically will be at 50. Right? Why is it at 50? Because I have total debits of 1,150. I need this to balance total credits of 50. What do I do? Well, I'm going to take this journal entry and post it into the accounts. Over here, give this a brand new color. Okay, so over here. I'm going to show bond payable credit for 1.1 million, always at face value. Okay, premium on bond payable. This is going to be shown over here at 50. Now, in terms of what happens over here, this next step, when I issue a bond, right, that's if I issue debt, right, where does that go? If I'm selling bonds, this is going to go into financing. So I'm going to say over here, issuance of a bond and the amount that I'm going to go through and record it for, right? I'm not going to label this as increase in bonds and increase on premiums. I'm just going to say bond issuance over here at a million one fifty, or you might say cash proceeds from bond issuance, something like that. I can, even if I want to. I can go down over here and just copy this language, total, total bond proceeds. Fine. Absolutely cool. So when you're going through and doing these types of questions, this is obviously a lot more intricate than what we were going through and doing before. And this, again, is why is this such a great review for the final exam? Because this is from long non-current liabilities. This over here is like from non, non-current assets, non-current liabilities. This is also from uh, property, plants, and equipment. When we, we had to go through and memorize some of these journal entries. So this is why the statement of cash flows is the perfect final exam for an accounting class. So as we come over here, we've dealt with all of the additional information. We've dealt with all that information first. Now what we're going to go through and do is balance the remainder of the T accounts. Again, for this part over here, if this is new to you, you need to watch the other videos because I'm going to go through this a little bit more quickly unless it's something I haven't done before. To balance receivables to get from 400 to 300, I need to do I need a credit of 100. I'm going to do the opposite to cash or I'm going to debit cash and when I come to describe it my accounts receivable decreased by 100. I decrease accounts receivable, my assets with a credit. So this is going to be a decrease in accounts receivable over here for 100. Now, for the allowance for doubtful accounts, similar to this is a contra asset account. It has a credit balance. Right. Remember, this is how we show the amount that we're going to be receiving from our accounts receivable. When I look at this over here, what causes the increase in the allowance for doubtful accounts? Right. I went from 15 to 35. So I'm going to have over here, I'm going to have a debit of 20. I do not call this an increase in the ADA. I'm going to call this bad debt expense. I'm going to call it what it is. 
it's bad debt expense. Remember, when I do the journal entry to go through and increase, this is going to basically be 20 and 20. This is a non-cash item. It does not actually draw on cash. It's an estimate by management in terms of the receivables we cannot collect. So, or it's part of the estimate of the receivables we don't collect. Inventory went from 200 to 150. I do the opposite to cash. I'm going to credit cash over here. This is going to be an increase in inventory. Remember, I do the opposite to cash. I describe what's going on in the T account. My prepaid expenses, right? This decreased by 25. How do I get from 175 to 150? I do the opposite to cash. My description is going to be a decrease in prepaid expenses. Short-term investments went from 100 to 150. Oh, it has the word investing or investments. This is going to be an increase in short-term investments, right? And we'll just say that we purchased this for 50. In reality, this would be a little bit more complicated for land. And I did this wrong. I need to do the opposite to cash. So over here, this is going to be a credit for 50. Right. I've debited this over here for 50. Crediting this over here for, for 50. Land. So basically over here, I do the opposite to cash. Okay. So over here, I'm going to call this a purchase of land. And this is going to be for 100. I'm doing the opposite to cash. Now, let's take a look at equipment. Okay. And this, if you're taking my class, this is where we're getting into big points. Why is it big points? Because you had to have gone through and recorded the sale of the equipment into the T account. And now you have to go through and balance. So 600 minus 100 is 500. To get from 500 to 750, I need a debit of 250. I'm going to do the opposite to cash right over here. What do I call this? This is a purchase of equipment. This is not an increase of equipment. This is a purchase of equipment. Let's go to the next one. Accumulated depreciation on equipment. What causes this? How do I get from... So 200 minus 20 is 180. Going from 180 to 250, I'm going to need 70. So when I look at this over here, in terms of this accumulated depreciation on equipment, I do the opposite to cash, right? What do I call this? Very important. This is going to be depreciation expense. Remember, when we're doing the journal entry, we call it what it is. What's increasing accumulated depreciation on equipment, it's depreciation expense. If you didn't record the sale in the T account, that's where you're going to have problems. Okay. Intellectual property. This was over here. This was something that was basically, it was a non-cash transaction. This is balanced. Accumulated amortization. Now, yesterday when I was going through and doing this crazy question that took 50 minutes from a Wiley question, this is part of the reason why I'm doing this video today, is that they directly debited the patents, which you can do. But I like using accumulated amortization. It's like accumulated depreciation. So what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to say, how do I get from 10 to 30? Well, I need a credit over here of 20. So what this is going to be is that this is going to be doing the opposite. This is going to be amortization expense. Okay, so when I'm recording amortization expense, Okay, so that's what I'm going to go through and do. So got this over here, amortization expense. Accounts payable. 
to go from 250 to 500. I need 250. I do the opposite to cash. This is a liability account, right? So I increase my liabilities with credits. This is going to be an increase in accounts payable. Accrued liabilities. I go from 300 down to 100. This is a decrease of 200. I do the opposite to cash. This is going to be a decrease in accrued liabilities. Unearned revenue went from 185 to 215 or an increase of 30. I do the opposite to cash over here. This is going to be an increase in unearned revenue. Okay, so bond payable, zero plus the 400 non-cash exchange. If I don't put that in there, my numbers are going to be off. Plus the face value of the debt I issued equals 1.5 million. Premium on bonds payable, zero opening balance. The premium was 50, gives this. The sum of these two are the cash proceeds from the bond issuance. Common stock par, no change. I issued common stock, 199 plus 1800 gives me 1999 Everything's balancing so far. Let's take a look at treasury stock. For here, go from zero to 100. I'm going to need a debit of 100. So what exactly is this? When I purchase treasury stock, I'm debiting treasury stock. This is stock that I repurchase and I return to my treasury, right? It has a negative balance and owner's equity. So this is going to be called the purchase of treasury stock for 100. And we can even see this over here on the Home Depot. They'll have over here repurchases of common stock. Same thing as saying uh, treasury stock. Okay. So have this over here. Let's make sure our retained earnings is balanced. 1,015,695 gives me 320. So coming over here to my cash balance, I've got debits of 585. I have credits of 1,045,000. I subtract the smaller from the larger balance, leave the remainder on the larger side. When I have a negative or a credit balance, this is going to be net cash used in operating activities of 460. Over here for investing, I had the equipment sale that I bought or I, I, re, I purchased some short-term investments, got some land, purchase of equipment. Okay, so this is going to be net cash used in finance or excuse me, investing activities. Of 390. What am I trying to do now? My magic number is 2 million. My cash increased by 2 million. I need to make sure that when I'm adding these up, it equals up to 2 million. I sold common stock. I issued bonds. So over here, my net cash provided by financing activities, it's going to be 2,850,000. So when I'm going through over here, and I'm looking at, I've got net cash used in operating activities of 460, net cash used in investing activities of 390, net cash provided by financing activities of 2,850,000. Remember, I'm adding these up, subtract the smaller from the larger value, leave the remainder on the larger side. So when I add these up, I get to 2 million. If you're taking my class and don't balance, don't stress, go work on other parts of it. Really when I'm going through, I'm grading, I'm looking really at, did you go through and do this part over here? For my class, lots of partial credit. Okay, the last thing we're gonna go through and do is we're gonna go ahead and prepare the statement of cash flows. Because we've balanced, we should be in pretty good shape. So what we're going to go ahead and do is give ourselves a little bit more room. Notice down here, we already have our non-cash transaction input from that bond and the like. So over here, I'm going to have a net loss. Over here, if it's a credit balance, it's going to show over here as a negative amount. I have a loss on sale of equipment, decrease in AR. 
Okay. So again, I'm going through this rather quickly, but again, it's all being generated from the cash flow. If it's a debit balance, it's going to show as a positive amount. If it is a credit balance, it's going to show up as a negative amount, right? Again, the key to these problems and these questions is practice and repetition. If you're taking my class and you have not gone through these questions multiple times, it's not going to be a fun day at the office. Okay. So this will be my net cash used in operating activities. So my total net cash used in operating activities should be 460. Okay. From investing, I have cash proceeds from the sale of equipment, increase in investments, purchase of land, purchase of equipment. This is a positive amount because it's a debit. These are all going to be negative amounts. So over here, it's going to be 390 net cash used in investing activities. My last one is in financing, sale of common stock, cash proceeds, purchase of treasury stock. Okay, so over here, this is positive. This is a debit, so it's going to be positive. The purchase of treasury stock, this is going to be negative. When I add up these three amounts, this equals to two million. My beginning cash balance is five hundred thousand, so my ending cash balance over here is two point five million. Non-cash transactions, I acquired a patent by issuing a 400 bond payable. So for this particular question, and when you go through and look at this, and if you kind of look at this, the whole thing with this question is always going to be in the setup, right? And when you're going through and dealing with this additional information, what I've kind of found is that if I know the journal entries, that's going to go through and to help me out as I go through and answer these different questions. So that's part four of cash flows. And I want to um, thank you uh, for being here today uh, for this advanced uh, question. Um, and thank you for being here today. Uh, if you want me to do any other videos on cash flows or any other accounting topics, and if I'm able to do so, I'd be more than happy to uh, create something new. Um, if you have any questions about the video or anything else, feel free to message me at 18 or email me at 1812cpa at gmail.com or leave a comment below. Thank you for liking and subscribing, and I look forward to seeing you on future videos. Have a great one.